Hello, welcome to the Real Analysis 1 course. This course is offered by University of Kerala to the BSc Mathematics students in semester 5. This course is divided into three modules, which are covered in the first three chapters of the book Understanding Analysis by Stephen Abbott, second edition. We shall now move on to module 1, which is the real numbers. We will start our discussion with natural numbers. Natural numbers means counting numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. The natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. The negative of natural numbers minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, etc. and 0 form a new category of numbers called the integers. That means integers are the numbers 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, etc. Now, we define a new category of numbers called the rational numbers. So rational numbers are numbers of the form p by q, where this p and q are integers and q not equal to 0. We take q not equal to 0 because if q is 0, we will get p by 0 and we know that division by 0 is not defined. So examples of uh, rational numbers are uh, 2 by 3 minus 4 by 7, 3 by minus 8, etc. Now if you take any natural number, so I take 17, I can write 17 as 17 by 1. So this becomes the form P by Q, which is a rational number. So every natural number can be converted to a rational number by simply putting by 1. So we can say that every natural number is a rational number. A similar argument stands for integers also. Minus 5 is an integer. I can put it as minus 5 by 1, which is of the form p by q, where p is minus 5 and q is 1, so that it is a rational number. 0, I can write 0 as 0 by 1, which is of the form p by q, where p is 0 and q is 1. So, Every integer can be converted to a rational number by simply putting by 1. So we can say that every integer is a rational number. Now, if we plot these rational numbers, all the rational numbers on the number line, if we plot all the rational numbers on the number line, we can see that this number line will not be completely filled. There will be gaps in the number line. And these gaps will be occupied by the numbers which cannot be expressed in the form p by q or that means these gaps will be occupied by numbers which are not rational numbers and such numbers are called irrational numbers so irrational numbers means numbers which are not rational that means numbers which cannot be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to zero so example for irrational numbers are root 2 root 3 pi and all. So the numbers on the number line can be categorized into two rational numbers and irrational numbers. So all these numbers, rational and irrational numbers together constitute a new system of numbers called the real numbers. So real numbers are numbers which can be represented on a number line. Real numbers are numbers which has a position on the number line. So as a result, the number line is also known as the real number line. So to put it formally, a real number is one which can, which has its position on the number line. As a result, we call the number line as a, the real number line. A rational number is any number that can be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are integers and uh, q not equal to 0. A real number which is not a rational is called irrational number. Now we will move on to the next section. The irrationality of root 2. So here we have a theorem first which states that there is no rational number whose square is 2. That means 
there is no rational number p by q says that p by q the whole square is equal to 2 this is what we have to prove okay so we prove this by the method of contradiction method of contradiction means we will assume the opposite of what is required here we require that we cannot find p and q says that p by q the whole square is equal to 2 now here we assume the opposite of that that means we will assume that there exist integers p and q satisfying p by q the whole square is equal to 2 mark this as equation number 1 now we also assume that this p and q do not have any common factors because if they have common factors if a fraction has a common factor then we can cancel that common factor and express it in the simplest form for example 24 by 36 you can see that 24 and 36 has 12 as a common factor so if I delete with that common factor 12 I will get 2 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator and this is our new p by q okay so we will assume we will also assume that p and q does not have any common factor if at all it has a common factor we can delete that common factor and express it in the simplest form now from equation number one we have p square by q square is equal to 2 so cross multiplying we will get p square is equal to 2 q square mark it as equation number 2 okay so here if you if you look at carefully you find p square is equal to 2 multiplied by q square that means p square is a multiple of 2 which again means that p square is an even number now p square is an even number will yield you p is also an even number okay because the square of an even number is an even number and square of an odd number is odd number so p square is even will imply that p is even so since p is even p will be a multiple of 2 so i can write p is equal to 2 r where r is also an integer now we will put this in equation number 2. Equation number 2 was p square is equal to 2q square. So if we replace the value of p with 2r, we will get 2r the whole square is equal to 2q square. 2r the whole square means 4r square is equal to 2q square. If you divide both sides with 2, you will get q square is equal to 2r square. This means that q square is equal to 2 multiplied with r square. So 2 multiplied with r square means it is a multiple of 2, which means q square is an even number. So since q square is an even number, we can say that q is also an even number. Okay. Now, earlier we got that p is an even number. Okay. Now we got that q is an even number. So this means that both p and q are even. That means both p and q are multiples of 2. Okay. Now, earlier we have assumed that p and q have no common factors. But now we got that p and q are even, which means p and q have 2 as a common factor. Now, this contradicts our assumption that p and q have no common factors. Hence, what we have assumed at the beginning is wrong. That means we have assumed that there exists a rational number p by q such that p by q the whole square is equal to 2. So this assumption is wrong. So that means we can say that there is no rational number p by q such that p by q the whole square is 2. And this proves the theorem. Okay, now we will move on to a question a similar question as of the theorem prove that root 3 is irrational thus a similar argument work to show root 6 is irrational so first of all here we have to show that root 3 is irrational and uh, we have to check that this, this method which we have used to prove root 3 is irrational will work to show that root 6 is irrational. Now, 
we will prove this using the method of contradiction as before we will assume that root 3 is rational root 3 is rational means we can find numbers integers p and q such that p by q is equal to root 3 now if i square both sides i will get p by q the whole square is equal to root 3 the whole square and root 3 the whole square is 3 now take it as equation number 3 i have put it as 3 you can take it as equation number 1 now if uh, we will here we will assume that p and q will not have any common factors because if they have any common factors we can cancel those common factors and express it in the simplest form so here we assume that p and q are without any common factors now if we simplify this we'll get p square by q square is equal to 3 so we will get p square is equal to 3 q square take it as equation number next equation equation number 4 you can take it as 2 so here you can see that p square is 3 into q square which means that p square is a multiple of 3 since p square is a multiple of 3 and p is an integer so we will get p is also a multiple of 3 now p is a multiple of 3 that means you can write p is equal to 3 into some r where r is any integer okay so p is equal to 3r now we will substitute this p is equal to 3r in equation number 4 so p square will become 3r the whole square equal to 3q square 3r the whole square is 9r square is equal to 3q square if you divide both sides with 3 you will get q square is equal to 3r square so this means that q square is 3 into r square which is a multiple of 3. So q square is a multiple of 3. Hence we can say that q is also a multiple of 3. Now what we got is that earlier we got p is a multiple of 3. Now we got q is a multiple of 3. So we can say that both p and q are multiples of 3. Now initially towards the beginning of the proof we have assumed that p and q have no common factors. Now we got that p and q have 3 as a common factor. So which is a contradiction and this contradiction arised because we have started with the assumption that root 3 is rational that means there exist rational mm, integers p and q such that p by q is equal to 3 and this is wrong and so we can say that root 3 is rational this proves the first part of the question and the question had a second part which asked whether this same argument will work for to prove that root 6 is rational now we will check that so we will assume that root 6 is rational that means there exist integers p by and q such that uh, p by q is equal to root 6 so squaring both sides you will get p by q the whole square is equal to root 6 the whole square which is 6 and take this as equation number 5 We will also assume that P and Q do not have any factors in common. So from P by Q the whole square is equal to 6. We will get uh, P square is equal to 6 Q square. 6 you can again factor into prime numbers as 2 into 3 into Q square. So here you can see that P square is 2 into 3 into Q square. That means P square is a multiple of 2 and a multiple of 3 okay so since p square is a multiple of 2 and 3 we can say that p is also a multiple of 2 and 3 so we can write p is equal to 2 into 3 into some integer r 2 into 3 into r means 6r now we substitute the value of p equal to 6r in equation number 2 
So we will get in this equation p square is equal to 6 q square. So we will get p is 6 r. So 6 r the whole square is equal to 6 q square. So 6 r the whole square means 36 r square is equal to 6 q square. And uh, if you divide both sides with 6, you will get q square is equal to 6 r square and 6 you can factor as 2 into 3 into r square. So from here you can see that q square is a multiple of 2 and 3. So since q square is a multiple of 2 and 3, we can say that q is also a multiple of 2 and 3. So earlier we got that p is a multiple of 2 and 3. Now we got that q is also a multiple of 2 and 3. This means p and q are multiples of 2 and 3. Which means p and q have 2 and 3 as common factors. Which is a contradiction to our assumption that p and q have no common factors. So this contradiction arised because of our, our wrong assumption that root 6 is a rational number. Okay, so hence we can say that root 6 is not a rational number, that means root 6 is an irrational number. Now we will move on to the next question. Where does the proof of theorem 1.1, which means the theorem which says that there is no rational number whose square is 2. So where does the proof of that theorem break down? if we use it to prove root 4 is irrational. Now we know that root 4 is 2 which is not irrational that is irrational. So we have to check where does the proof of that theorem break down if we try to prove that root 4 is irrational. So uh, we will assume that uh, root 4 is irrational that means p by q is equal to root 4. So p square by q square is equal to uh, 4 root 4 the whole square. So we will get p square is equal to 4 q square. That means p square is a multiple of 4. Okay. We start by p by q is equal to root 4. So taking the whole square p square by q square is equal to root 4 the whole square which is 4. So this is p square by q square equal to 4. From here you will get p square is equal to 4 q square. That means p square is a multiple of 4. Okay. Now p square is a multiple of 4. Now does that imply that p is a multiple of 4? We will check. Uh, 16 is a square which is a multiple of 4. 4. So if I take the square root which is 4 which is again a multiple of uh, 4. Now 36. 36 is also a multiple of 4. If I take the square root of that, square root of 6. Now 6 is not a multiple of 4. That means we cannot write 6 as 4 into some integer. Okay. So it is not necessary that if p square is a multiple of 4, implies p is a multiple of 4. Okay. Because if p is a multiple of 2, then if you take the square, you will get p square is equal to 4r square. That means which is a multiple of 4. So even if p is a multiple of 2, we will get p square as a multiple of 4. Okay. So our proof will break down at this point. This our proof break downs at this point. Even at the very first or second step, it will break down. So this is the solution for this question.